difficulty or non-preparedness when having to start to practice or to, when having to start the practice session at the beginning of the day. No, I guess at, at least it's quite common. No, when you start that you feel your fingers don't respond yeah, as they should until you warm up and everything becomes uh, more fluent. Yeah. So that feeling is the one I wanted to focus on in this explanation. Yeah. Because I want to detach the physical dimension of performing. Yeah from the intellectual dimension of performing, yeah? When you feel like that, you might or you might not feel as unprepared intellectually, yeah? You might feel 100% intellectually, yeah? Meaning that, uh, for example, if you, if you were going to, to start working on a, on a first movement of a sonata, you have it clear in your mind, you have the exposition, you have the, the, the roots that you want to to go through in terms of the practicing, clear in your mind. But the, are, the fingers are the ones who are not there, right, at the beginning. So this exercise that we were doing last week, that is, we, we commonly use when teaching uh, beginners in Scaramuzza technique, it's also particularly useful for us, yeah? Why? Because now we will complete the explanation about it, but it allows us to warm up our hands prior to sitting in the piano. If we were on a high performance uh, schedule, meaning that we had concerts and we have to practice our four or five hours a, a day, yeah, we wouldn't like to spend uh, half an hour just uh, rumbling in the piano just to get our fingers there. Yeah, we would like to come to the piano, no? and more or less adjust a bit to the instrument, but start, yeah? Uh, this is particularly necessary when, for example, you have a room in which you're in a different city and you need to go to practice, and you don't have the room for seven hours. You have the room for the amount of time that they give it to you, yeah? And you need to take the most out of it. So it, it's very inefficient to have to start moving just your fingers for half an hour, yeah, to, to, get, the, to get there, yeah? So... The table exercise is something that you should do in the morning. You know, when you wake up, when you are there in the um, having your breakfast, yeah. So then you can can start, yeah, with the with the table exercise. Mainly doing weight lifting, yeah, weight lifting in the sense that we start like deploying all the all the weight of our the edge of the hands on the edge of the keyboard, right? We make sure our elbows are completely loose, okay? Let me see so you can see my yellow. Your awareness are, are loose completely, yeah? And then we start you know, settling the fingers, setting the fingers up. We continue to deliver the weight. Finger three, imagine that this is a table, yeah? So finger three can start receiving the weight, yeah? We can check that the wrist is elastic but firm, yeah? The other finger can start being lifted. Yeah, I will do it with this hand so you can see me better. Okay. Um, and then we start. Yeah, so we go. So first we check the transition to make sure that there is no tension in the transition. Yeah, so we make sure that we overlap. Okay. And then when we are completely sure there is no stress in the transition, then yeah, we we'll start with the exercise. Today we are going to see the, the chart again, Scaramuzza chart. Um, yes, sorry, there are bees all around. So uh, I, I hope I don't have one inside my room. Um, okay, so so well, I will I will start with the with the chart. Okay. So let's see. First of all, uh, Iris, Anna, Laura, and Georgios. Let's reconstruct the the whole process yeah we do it all together so we do it quicker okay so Iris what's the first thing that we do um the first thing for the table or yes. like from the beginning the, the, the first thing in in general oh. well was to have the piano closed or a table and well, I mean I always start with uh, with the uh, like standing up and letting our arm fall and then that's I go good. to the... That's very good, actually. Yeah, this one. 
in which we just relax completely. Yeah, we we do as if we had something lifting our arms. You do it with both hand, arms at the same time, right? And then down. Yeah, that's a nice warming up exercise. Yeah, just to see that you have the you have the power here. Yeah, and you don't have it here or there or interrupted in any part. Right? Good. Continue on that, on that line easy. Okay, so then after we've done the uh, letting our arms fall without any control, then we go to the table or to the piano, close the piano, and the thing was to get our hands on the on the top, uh, relax with no tension, and we would make sure that the elbows are also relaxed and they're not they're loose. After this, we would extend our fingers, again, relax, you're not tense. And from here, we would start uh, grabbing the fingers while I have all the pressure and all the um, weight on the top of the fingers. Okay. And the knuckles, remember, no? The knuckles with this attitude. Yes. Yeah? Um, never this attitude. Yeah, you don't have that mm -hmm. attitude, but nevertheless, yeah. Make sure that you have the dome, yeah? You see how nice I get all the dome in my hand, yeah? Like that, yes. and like that. Okay, okay. and mm. after this, yeah. we would start, um, the, the wrist is going to lift by the pressure that I will have on the top of the fingers. Okay. Not because of the wrist, not because I can lift my wrist, but with the pressure I have here, I'll be able to lift a little bit and separate the wrist, just a little bit. I understand what you say, but I will just correct it slightly in the phrasing. I would say, by supporting our weight on the tip of your fingers, yeah, is that the weight will be directed there and not into the wrist, yeah? Because when you say pressure, Remember that pressure, remember we always want to do something. So if you say pressure, the student will might think that he or she needs to put pressure. Yeah? And it's true what you say, there is pressure. There is pressure of the weight, natural weight falling on the tip of the fingers. Yeah, but you have to be careful with the un understanding that it might, yeah? But it's true, what you say is correct. Yeah, but whenever we, as teachers you make an explanation, you always have in this case, in which is a passive exercise, we are trying to not make uh, some, we don't, we don't want to push. We, so always trying to um, never inst uh, instigate the student to proactively tense or proactively, yeah, even by indirect explanation. Okay? But so far, very, very good. Now, Laura, let's see if you can actually perpetrate this exercise. Yeah? Uh, uh, un until there, yeah, until uh, w when when it is uh, stopped, okay? We can't hear you. Huh? Once you're in the right position and you've scrunched your fingers and your wrist is kind of at a right angle, your arm, lower arms at a right angle, um, you then put your thumb down on the keyboard and then slowly transfer the weight from your thumb to finger two. And then again, transfer the weight to finger three. And then there you'll feel all the weight just on your middle finger. And then slowly kind of shake your lower arm so that you can feel that it's relaxed and there's no tension. Yes. And then transfer your weight again to the forefinger. Good. And then to the fifth finger. And then you kind of you do it again, don't you? But you go the other way. You're like yes. 50. That's fine. That's fine. Good. That would be the relaxation part of, of it. Now we need to work on something we didn't work last time. That was the triggering mechanism, right? When we actually work on action, yeah, on real action. Because what happened unt until that point of the exercise is Anna. You hear me? Yes, I hear you. What happens sound-wise 
at this stage we are at the moment in the exercise. Are we producing sound or not? No, we're not producing sound at the Why? moment. Because we're having the group of the fingers trapped in the keys and we need a little bit of movement of the fingers in order to make a sound. Yes, and I will make that explanation a bit more precise. We need speed, yeah? The piano doesn't register the weights, yeah? We register the weights, and the weight is what we have to deal with, yeah? It's the physical, the physical dimension of the behavior of our body that we need to, to deal with. But the piano doesn't. The piano that, it doesn't make any difference, yeah? If, if we just press a key and we push or we don't push, it will sound the same, yeah? So, what the piano registers is exclusively the speed. Exclusively the speed. So, and everything will be about the speed, performance-wise. So, from here to the machine, yeah? So, in Scaramuzza technique, speed will be strictly related with distance to the key in most of the cases. Distance to the key, not to acceleration. Acceleration, what happens with a car when it needs to accelerate a lot? You need a bigger engine, right? You need more uh, to produce... You, I mean, it's a very specific thing, no? But very good cars like Ferraris or, uh, yeah high-end cars, yeah, they can go from zero to 100 kilometers in certain amount of time, yeah, because they have huge engines that can produce a huge effort and make the speed happen in less distance. That's the, the, the core of the thing, no? If you have a good car, you need less distance to achieve the same speed, yeah? But that relates to the concept of what? Of effort, yeah? The machine needs to make a huge effort, yeah, to reach the same speed, in less distance, yeah? And primarily, in Scaramuzza technique, we are against efforts as much as we can. There will be certain circumstances in which, obviously, we will have to make an effort, but if we do not have to make an effort, we will not, okay? So, speed will be related to distance because, naturally, if you have more distance to the objective, you have more time to develop the same speed or more, yeah? If you, if you are at this distance to the key, and you start and you play, yeah. At the point you reach the key, you are much faster. If with the same effort to accelerate, you start from there. Okay, it's even clearer in a compound movement when we work with gravity even more tra in a more transparent way, like in forward movement. If you let your hands, your arm, sorry, fall, um, fall, in, fall into the keyboard from there, yeah you will produce a certain sound. If you do it from here, you will produce another sound. Yeah? So distance yeah, will be at, at the core of our focus. Okay? So, in that line of thought, yeah, we will come back to the exercise now. You will stand on finger three. Okay? And the idea is, first of all, to find out how high you can lift your finger yeah, without tensing biceps or triceps or any other part of the device, yeah, because there will be a point in which if you continue to pull, to push up, yeah, you will start feeling tense, yeah, and then from there, in the manner of a light switch, in which you just do on or off, so you don't have a knob, yeah, that you do on and off, no, I want you to do on or off, yeah, you will play that key, yeah? you will press that key, okay, so whenever you are starting in Scaramuzza technique, you play loud, yeah, you, you try to play as, as forte as you can, because the palais, the color palais, the most difficult part in finger movement, for example, is to produce the fortes, not the pianos, yeah, because you are doing with you are dealing with the, the smaller the smallest muscles, yeah. So then obviously for these muscles it's difficult to produce a forte purely, yeah, without having to to help with the arm or anything. Like that. So we will start working on the forte, yeah. When we bring the forte up, then all the colors appear towards the pianissimo, yeah.
So without uh, altering the, the movement. Okay, so Georgios, set, can you set the hand in the piano? And can you lift your fingers in the way I say? Yeah? From the beginning. From the beginning. Should I call them standing? Mm -hmm. okay. Georgios, one thing. Would you be able to move the camera just slightly to the right so we can see what the keyboard? Okay. That's it, that's fine, that's enough. That's good. Um the fourth, yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Do the first column. So two, three, two, three. No sound, yeah. Yeah, the first column of the chart. Do you know the chart? Do you remember the chart? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's perhaps. Good. Yes, that's it. Well done. Exactly. Now, make sure I can't check, but make sure that you are completely relaxed in the elbows. Huh? Okay, very good, very good. So we're going to see a chart and we're going to go to Laura. So, Georgios, can you pull up the chart? No, you don't have the computer there, do you? Mm, I need to share it here. Do you I have a computer or is it a phone? This is a computer, yes, you can find it. Yeah, if you can share it there, it would be great. Because if I share it myself, my system starts to break down. So... Um, the chart, in the meantime, the, the Scaramuzza chart, yeah, it's a combination of fingers that he would, uh, he would exercise, yeah, making sure that the student exercises all possible combinations, yeah, for the two to three, two to four, two to five, five, yeah, in all the, the possible combinations. He does two columns in which, in these two columns, he combines two, two, three, two, four, two, five, for example, yeah, and there are, he does Another two columns in which you combine four. So you do a combination of four, like two, four, three, five, yeah? Which you, you could say, well, but it's the same, is it? No, it's not exactly the same because you endure more, you know? You endure a bit more of, of the effort. So, Georgios, can you show the team uh, where to start from, from the little score that is down there, so they know where to put the... Uh, there you are. You see. Yeah. So I, I would kindly ask everyone to set both of your hands precisely in the first uh, in the first semi briefs, yeah, as the first. Semi so finger two on the right hand on C. E. Ah, C. Sorry. On C and finger two of the left hand as well on E. Yes. So both hands together. Okay. Good. Okay. So, Anna, can you do the first column, please? Yes. Can you hear me correctly? We can hear you beautifully. Okay. Thank you. So, first column, we go from two, fingers number two to fingers number three. So, we position our hands in E. See? Then we go. Then. Two to four. Okay, then three to four. Then three to five. Then four to five. Then three to five. Three to four. And two to four. Well done. Well done. Very good. Very good. Okay, Iris, can you do it? Ah, no, sorry, Iris, can you do it or not? Yes, 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 yes. Sure? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, um, um, yeah. So let me hold this here. Okay, you can see fine, right? Yes. Okay. Then it would be. I always tell the students to start with the four movements. 
So they make sure that they fall and then they relax. Okay. Okay, then... Well done, Iris. Well done, Iris. Very good. Now, remember, the thumb, yeah, should be... Yes, here. Yeah, with, hmm. Inside. So basically, if we are, let me just help you... As you can see, the thumb is not there in the first column. Can you realize that? Yes. Yeah. So, but in general, yeah, the thumb in this attitude. Yeah, that's a nice position. So, thumb in, yeah, mm -hmm. approximately in the same average position as the other one. Let's see. Okay. That's great. Good, good, good. Very good. Georgios, let's see. We can't see your hands, Georgios. Ah, eh? uh, yes. Ah, uh, now I have to stop the second, yes? Ah, uh, no, 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 it's fine, it's fine. We can, I mean, I can see you. The rest can see you, but we can't see you because of the position. If you can change the position of the camera. Uh, let me get this out. Once... Every line? Once every line, please. And then get ready, Laura. You can work on several different things. First of all, overlapping, meaning there is, a, there is a difference between legatissimo, legato, and detached. Yeah? Legatissimo, legato, and detached. So, Georgios is doing legatissimo, for example. He's doing, which is great because it's the most difficult one to do. Yeah, the legatissimo. So, I also recommend you always to do legatissimo, which means that for a fraction of a second, yeah? Both sound at the same time. The legatissimo also is the cleverest uh, first articulation to do because it it helps you to ensure that you don't produce tension yeah, in the in the transference from finger to finger. Yeah, because you are in the in the floor, let's say, with both at the same time for a noticeable amount of time. Yeah, so you can really check how you are doing the transference. Yeah, after you've done that, yeah, you can do the the column again. Yeah. With more accentuation and in legato. So. And accenting the first one. Yeah. So, Laura, can you do that? So, legato, yeah, and accenting the first one. So, dos. So, sorry, in, in English. So, two, three, two, three, two, four, two, four, three, four, three, four, three, five, three, five, four, 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 yeah? So, and no in uh, collaboration of any other part of the body. Let's see. Okay, better. Laura, um, no. Let's do like this. Can you do a snapshot of the chart so Georgios can take off the, the share screen? Because uh, otherwise I can barely see you. It's too small. Yeah, so to give you a proper feedback. Can you zoom out from the chart? Sorry? Can you zoom out from the chart so we can see the whole chart? Because right now... Ah, it's so yeah. That's a, yes, Georgios, can you? Can you zoom out the chart so they can see the whole the whole thing and they take a picture? Um, yeah. This is the link to the... Or you Chat. can send the link to them. That's another yeah. Oh yeah, another link. Okay, perfect. Mm. Super. So I will spotlight Laura. That's it. Okay. Very good. Exactly. 
I really need to tell you something. So, you are there. Yeah, I will do with no sound, okay? So, look at me, Laura. Can you see me? Yeah. You see me well, right? Clear? Yeah. Look at me, but like if you were an X-ray machine, okay? I need you to, to check everything. So, mm -hmm. when, when I... You see that I'm placing another... My left arm, hand, yeah, on top of my phone. So, I make it a bit heavier for you. So, when I play loud, look how loud I can play. Yeah, I would do it in this arm as well, look. By no mean, I do this. Yeah, no. I, why? Because I teach my body to not do what is natural. Your body is a very efficient machine. So when, you, when you're asking your system to do something that is beyond the limits of what is prepared to do with the finger movement, for example, oh, yeah. um, automatically you start collaborating. It's a reflection. Yeah, it, it happens. After. So, but what I can, what I learned to do, and what we are trying to learn to do, is to to keep it the, in the limit. To say no, we're not going to collaborate with the forearm or the arm or the shoulder or the, nothing. We are going to do as much as the finger can do. Okay. So, how do I know that you're collaborating with another part of your body? Because you are bouncing. Yeah. When you are playing, you bounce. So then that means that two things are happening. You are collaborating possibly. And you are pressing too much. So if you press too much, yeah, if instead of playing and releasing, you continue pushing, yeah, obviously the wrist is going to lift. You see what I mean? So I'll bring you back one step. Can you do it again very slowly like this, Laura? You go down, you press both, and you lift the other one. Yeah? So we clean up the excess of pressure. Okay? Yeah. Let's see. Better. Now, when you have finger three, all the other fingers up. Can you? So okay. don't touch the keys with the other fingers. Again, look. Yes, that's it. That's it. So finger three like this. Okay. okay. Okay, I want a teacher's explanation on something, yeah? If I want to lift my fingers, if, if I want to develop distance to the key, right? Why? Why? It's important that the wrist or the edge of the hand, as you prefer to call it, yeah? Is in line with the keyboard and is not lifted. Why? We use the fingers as the power source to make the movement instead of the, making the force from the wrist. If we lift it to up, to up, we're not going to have momentum to move the fingers with their natural weight. If wow. we move down, the same thing. We're not going to have momentum. Look at this. This is a mess. But if we have it in line, we're going to allow, this is just basics, we're going to allow the force, the power to go here from the knuckles to the fingers instead from here. And that is the aim of this exercise, to have the power on the fingers to have articulation and note precision instead of using the tricks and losing your Exactly, exactly. And there is something else in relation to the angle. It is? I mean, it's, it's the same. You cannot lift the finger if the wrist is much down. It's going to be much effort than if you have the wrist straight. Then the it's, finger couldn't do Exactly, much. I will show you. Look. If your if your hand is heading up, yeah, obviously you lift a bit, no, and you already have distance. Okay? But if the wrist is up, yeah, then the angle to lift, yeah, because of the circularity of the lifting, yeah, it becomes harder. Yeah. And also it creates more tension, yes, as as the as it is an, an saying, yeah. 
This angle is an angle of tension, yeah? This, on the contrary, yeah, is, is cleaner, yeah? And allows the finger to easily pull in, yeah, the, the device, the entire device, okay? So always try to keep a nice straight line, never like this, as Anna said, yeah, never like this, but never like this either, yeah? In finger movement, in finger movement, then in arm movement, yes, we will do it on purpose, yeah? But, but now, yeah, in finger movement, says that. And I would like to see you and Georgios, yeah? Uh, we are going to do the first column, Laura and, you, and Georgios, and I want to check how much you can lift the fingers, yeah? So at least two, two fingers above there, yeah? Above the key. Let's see. Laura first, and then Georgios. Wait, wait. <laughs> That's too much. That's too much. So, never like this, eh? Never, never like this. So, we have to, that, that's exactly why I wanted to do the exercise. So, remember, nice position, that's the maximum I can lift, for example, myself, yeah? Because if I lead, try to lift more, I get like this, and this is terrible, yeah? So, nice curve line, yeah? And that's the challenge, to find inside your own uh, performing device, what's the limit, no? How much you can lift without distorting the the convenient shape of the hand okay so let's see better better i will work on the wrists a bit yeah only on the wrist Georgios. we are all eyes let's see <laughs> Uh, uh, just one second, I need to spotlight you and I don't know how to do it. All forte. All forte, yes, of course, all forte. In this, at this stage, always all forte. can you see when Georgios does it in terms of the shape of the hand? Uh, the shape doesn't really change the entire way through. Um, and also he picks his fingers up really high when he does it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So...